An amplifier is a device that takes in a signal and spits out an amplified version of it. For example, a voltage amplifier can be modeled with a voltage controlled voltage source. It takes in a voltage as input and gives a scaled or amplified version of it at the output. Practically, we use devices like BJTs and MOSFETs to realize these amplifiers and all such practical devices have an input impedance and an output impedance. Note, in a voltage amp, ideally we would want the voltage signal Vs to be amplified. But we have a voltage division between the source impedance RS and the input impedance RN. So only the voltage drop across the input impedance RN is amplified. Similarly, on the output side, there is a voltage division happening across the output impedance RO and the load RL. But we want the entire amplified voltage to appear across the load. Therefore, an ideal voltage amplifier would have infinite input impedance, which is an open circuit, and zero output impedance, which is a short circuit. Just like a voltage amplifier, we have three other kinds, based on the type of input and the output it gives. A current amplifier senses an input current and gives us a scaled version of it at the output. It can be modeled with the current controlled current source. But note, the input impedance for a current sensing amp must be zero so that all current passes through the input branch and the output impedance for a current driving amp must be infinite so that all the amplified current passes through the load branch. Similarly, a transconductance amplifier senses a voltage and gives a proportional current at the output It can be modeled with the voltage controlled current source. Transresistance amplifier senses a current at the input and gives us a proportional voltage. It is modeled with a current controlled voltage source. To really understand how the input and output resistances affect the gain, let's cascade two voltage amplifiers. Both have an open circuit gain of 5, which means if we give an input of say 20 millivolts, the first stage amplifies it to 100 millivolts and the second stage amplifies it to 500 millivolts. But practically, it's not that simple. The first amplifier has a finite output impedance and the second amplifier has a finite input impedance. So there's a voltage division between the output impedance of the first stage and the input impedance of the second stage. Ideally, if R out is much much smaller than R in, then this expression is almost 1 and the entire output of the first stage is transferred to the next stage. Let's work through an example. Let the output impedance of the first stage be 9 kilo ohms and the input impedance of the second stage be 1 kilo ohms. If we give 20 millivolts, it's amplified to 100 millivolts. But this is not the input to the next stage. Using the voltage division rule, the input to the next stage, that is the drop across Rn, would be just 10 millivolts, which is then amplified to 50 millivolts. Remember, ideally, we needed 500 millivolts at the output, but we just have 50 millivolts, just 10% of the desired output. But if the output impedance of the first stage was small, something like 10 ohms, and the input impedance of the second stage was huge, something like 100 kilo ohms, then almost the entire 100 millivolts would be transferred to the next stage, and then it becomes 500 millivolts. In the next video, we will see how and why BJTs and MOSFETs are used as amplifiers, and how do we analyze them, namely the DC and AC analysis. Thank you, and do consider subscribing.